And it's to Myanmar now where protesters are out on the streets again to continue their demonstrations against last month's military coup. Tens of thousands are marching with the largest protests in the city of Mandalay. There are protests too in the largest city, Yangon. It follows police raids targeting opposition leaders. Witnesses described hearing shots during those raids. A number of people were arrested. It comes as the Chinese government says it's willing to work with the relevant parties to ease tensions. Close to the ground for safety, her shirt says everything will be OK. But it wasn't for Mandalay University student Kyal Sin. She was shot in the head and killed as police opened fire on protesters last Wednesday. Thousands attended her funeral a day later, giving the three-finger salute. It's become a gesture of solidarity among pro-democracy civilians and a show of defiance against the military. Kjelsen hasn't been allowed to rest in peace. Witnesses say her grave was disturbed by soldiers shortly after her burial. They allege her body was subject to a gravesite autopsy by military doctors, only adding to the outrage over her killing. Kjell Sin's story is no isolated incident. Wednesday was the deadliest day since protests began at the start of February. But UN figures show more than 50 civilian protesters have been killed since the military coup. Many people say the international community isn't doing enough. Like this nun who took to the streets to stand between vulnerable protesters and the riot police. There's no one to protect Myanmar's people. People have to defend themselves and help each other, as we can't trust anyone. It's not safe. They arrest and beat those they don't like and kill them. Diplomatic efforts so far have failed. The UN Special Envoy has urged the Security Council to act now, but it hasn't stopped one day of violence. Many are wondering when everything will really be okay on the streets of Myanmar again. Journalist A. Min Tant joins me now from Yangon. A, police have stepped up raids overnight. Have we seen much violence there today? Uh, yes, although we haven't seen quite as much violence as we saw earlier in the week and on last Sunday, there has been quite a lot more violence than we saw in the last few days. Uh, during the night raids, quite a number of people reported seeing their neighbors being taken, who were then subsequently beaten. And in fact, we saw that one uh, local uh, National League for Democracy ward official was actually killed due to his injuries sustained while they were being raided. Um, and then uh, regarding protests that happened throughout the day, we also saw that police were stepping up some of their crowd dispersal methods uh, from the last few days, which was largely through stun grenades as well as uh, smoke, uh, tear gas. Today, we saw that police began to use rubber bullets as well as live bullets again. Right. Now, the Chinese government, um, we're hearing, is saying that they're willing to engage with all sides and all parties to ease tensions in Myanmar. What's their role in this? So the Chinese government has a very long history in Myanmar, um, being Myanmar's uh, neighbor in terms of sharing a land border as well as being one of the largest economies in the region. Um, the Chinese government has also had a hand in um, the development of the country through foreign direct investment as well as uh, in the ongoing conflicts, especially in the border regions with ethnic minorities, uh, at times arming uh, ethnic armed organizations as well as uh, arming and supplying and supporting uh, the Myanmar military. And so it's it's a very complicated sort of relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, many in the pro-democratic camp are definitely very suspicious of Chinese involvement. All right, Eamon Tan, journalist in Yangon, thanks very much for the update. Thank you for having me.